A simple active filter is realized using one op amp and two capacitors and uh, two resistors in this circuit. We want to understand uh, what it is doing and we want to find the transfer function V out over Vn. And then for the specific values of resistors and capacitors, uh, find the poles and zeros. So let's uh, see what this is doing. Uh, first thing to notice is, of course, the impedance of cap is uh, simply, uh, so impedance of capacitor is simply 1 over Cs, obviously. In uh, steady state um, frequency analysis, we substitute S with J omega, and we get Z of C is equal to JC of 1 over JC omega. So as expected, when the frequency goes uh, super high, so at very high frequency, uh, the impedance of cap, because frequency is in denominator, impedance of cap goes to infinity, goes to zero, and then caps are shorted. So at super high frequency or high enough frequency cap, uh, the, the circuit looks like this. Um, so you have a shorted negative input terminal because C1 is shorted, C2 is shorted, negative input terminal is shorted to the output. So we have this scenario. And... Uh, uh, because of that, if op-amp is linearly biased and in linear region of operation, it's an ideal op-amp mutual short is valid. Therefore, as a part of mutual short, we know that V positive equal to V negative as long as op-amp is in linear region of operation. And uh, in this case, you can see that the positive uh, terminal is zero, negative terminal becomes zero. Effectively, the output is zero. So at super high frequency, output goes to zero. At super low frequency, so let's say when omega approaches DC, uh, then the circuit looks like uh, open because we have uh, omega goes to zero, impedance of cap goes to infinity, caps are effectively open, feedback loop is open. So as if we have open loop circuit like this. So uh, we have input connected to V in, V in connected to input negative terminal, but effectively it's an open loop circuit. So uh, since op amp is ideal, and ideal op amp has open loop infinite gain, then the gain effectively goes to infinity. Uh, the circuit has no connection between input and output effectively at DC exactly. But before DC, there is a still some connection because impedances are not exactly infinite. So we expect that at DC, the gain goes to infinity in this circuit intuitively. But let's analyze it. To analyze, it's, it's easy to write just a simple KCL here. Remember that we are making the assumption that ideal op amp is properly biased, so the supply voltages are properly connected. As a result, this op amp is a linear region of operation. Therefore, virtual short, which means V positive equal to V negative, is valid. Since V positive is zero, V negative is zero as well. As long as op amp is in linear region of operation, as, and as you can see, it, there's a negative feedback loop here as well. So uh, that's keeping the, safe, the circuit is stable. With that in mind, so this point is zero volt, this point is zero volt, the input current I1 cannot go through the negative input terminal because ideal op amp has infinite input uh, impedance. Therefore, this I1 has to go through the feedback, the total feedback impedance in this circuit, which means this whole thing. So I1 goes through that and I1 comes out of it toward the output. I can write a KCL at this node. So uh, let's write a KCL. So KCL at uh, input negative terminal. So input or negative input terminal of the op amp. So I can write that. To write that, we have uh, I1 truth R1 is equal to the current through all these uh, total feedback resistance. So that effectively translate to uh, Vn minus zero divided by R1, that's this current, equal to zero minus V out. That's the voltage across this feedback resistance, zero minus V out, divided by the total resistance that we have, which is one over C1S, in parallel with uh, R2. As you can see, C1 is in parallel with R2 and one over C2S series. So R2 plus one over C2S. If you, and the good thing about this is we only have a equation that relates V to V out. That's exactly what we were looking for. And remember, these are function of S. I'm not just showing them. As a result, the transfer function for V out over V in as a function of S is equal to our desired H of S. The transfer function is equal to minus 1 over R1 times 1 over C1S 
in parallel with R2 plus 1 over C2S. So that is a H of S formula. Now, um, if uh, we do further simplification by just dealing with the parallel, effectively what the parallel of the impedances, we get this outcome that V out S over V in S is equal to the, of course, the transfer function of this amplifier, uh, filter amplification, is equal to uh, minus 1 over R 1 S times, or let me just write it in a better fashion. So it's equal to this outcome. So minus 1 plus R2 uh, C2 S divide by uh, R1 S times uh, C1 plus C2 plus R2 C1 C2 S and um, this you can see that we have a first order numerator and we have a second order denominator in S uh, polynomial in S so no wonder we have uh, because we have a second order denominator we have two poles basically two roots for the denominator and because we have first order numerator we have one root for numerator one zero so as a result let me highlight this as my final answer for the transfer function of the system so this is what I wanted to find uh, for this system as a result, what I can say is um, we have uh, one, two poles in this system and one zero. So my uh, zero is at s equal to, uh, of course, set this to zero. You get minus one over r2 c2. And for poles, of course, you can see the first pole is at, uh, the first pole is at setting R1 S to 0, so you get S equal to 0, so we have the pole at DC, and for the second pole, as you can see, we have to set uh, the, one, the C1 plus C2 plus R2 C1 C2 S equal to 0, so we get S for the second pole is equal to negative C1 plus C2 divided by um, R2 C1 C2. Now, if you substitute the values given here, then what you get um, for the provided values in terms of the position of poles and zeros, the first, the, the only zero we have turned out to be at negative 5,000 by substituting R2C2 that it's provided here, the values of um, 125 kilo ohm and uh, 1.6 nanofarad, then we get negative 5,000 uh, radian per second or 5 kilo radian per second. And uh, for the Pole that we have, if you substitute the values that are provided, then you get it become negative 25 kilo uh, or thousand radian per second. Okay, um, if you are interested to see now because of the position of poles and zeros that we have, if you're interested to see what the circuit response in terms of magnitude body plot is, in magnitude body plot we are plotting pony log 10 uh, magnitude of h of uh, omega by substituting S with, uh, S with J omega, basically, in the formula for transfer function. And uh, we plot that. Um, we plot that using the, um, say, the body plot. So what we have is something like this. Let me just uh, make sure I'm not missing something. OK, so x-axis is omega, um, radian per second, maybe in log scale. What we have is at DC, of course, as we expect, we have a pole, so the gain, overall gain goes to infinity, as we also intuitively discussed. Uh, but then after that, what we see is the impact of, um, uh, as you can see, we have the impact of one pole kicking in. So effectively, uh, and given that the second pole is far, far away from the first pole, so uh, we are not yet feeling the impact of it, uh, we would say, at, we have a drop of roughly 20 dB per decade. Basically, uh, the, uh, the gain is dropping at a level of 20 dB every 10 times frequency is increasing. So 20 dB per decade is the body plot drop. And soon, uh, this continues approximately up to the point that omega reaches, <clears throat> omega reaches uh, 5,000 radian, as is shown in this circuit. So 
5,000 radian per second. And then at that point, the zero counteract uh, the pole. So we have roughly a constant, I mean, very approximately rudimentary. And then as soon as we hit the 25,000, the uh, second pole kicks in, uh, in addition to, uh, so again, uh, counteracting the impact of the zero. And then we're going to go down by 20 dB per decade in terms of uh, in terms of the um, overall frequency response of this uh, filter. So um, beyond, let's say, the second pole that we have, that is at 25 uh, kiloradian per second, or 25,000 radian per second. And as you can see, the overall response indicated is sort of a low-pass uh, filter response that has uh, very high gains at uh, DC or low frequencies. And then as we go down to super high frequencies because of the intuitively the short that happened on the feedback loop, we get to um, gain of zero in this circuit. So effectively, it's sort of a low-pass filter. I hope that this is helpful.